Welcome to the woods. The sun is uh, shining, skies are blue. I've had a productive morning. And that sounds like the start of a poem, but it's not gonna be one. I promised you I would uh, put out a video every Tuesday. And I was worried that I wouldn't have much to talk about after a while. And then the country went even more mental than uh, it usually is. And I realized there's always going to be something to talk about. And I mentioned that in the last video. And then I let you down. I didn't do one last Tuesday. And there's a reason for that. I had to, um, I had to wait and see if I was allowed to speak on current affairs in this country on this channel without being arrested, imprisoned, uh, kicked off the channel Because there was some protests and in those protests was some trouble and some violence and many people in the in the UK knew this was kind of on the cards hoped it wouldn't happen but it did And I'm not going to dwell on why those protests were there. I mentioned it in the last video. And I'm not going to dwell on the trouble that this country's been through recently. I am going to talk about how that started and the response to it because I think that bears talking about. It was fairly obvious after the atrocity, the murder of three children, that people were going to be angry and frightened. And fear and anger can boil over. They're two very strong emotions. And fear and anger has been felt in this country many times. And the government has a way, um, it actually has whole departments dedicated to placating and calming down the situation to such an effect that it can be rather sickening to see it's so orchestrated um, and fake and many people know this many people understand this after the bombings in Manchester, the spontaneous um, singing of uh, Don't Look Back in Anger was actually orchestrated by the government and promoted by the government and then pushed afterwards by the government in order to turn people's emotions away from fear and anger to a more conciliatory avenue anyway <coughs> after this recent atrocity that didn't happen in fact everything 
that was done by the government would seem to be to have been done in order to inflame those emotions. Everything they did made the people feel more angry at both the perpetrator and those in authority that allowed it to happen and those in authority that would not condemn nor explain to the people how they were going to, in the future, ensure it never happened again. They didn't do that. They didn't talk to the public. They didn't try to calm it down. <coughs> and when the protests did turn troublesome. There was no speaking to community leaders. I'll get on to that in a minute. There was no kneeling down. There was no softly, softly approach, which we've seen many times in many protests. But in this one, the police were in full riot gear, on horseback, carried truncheons and batons. Attack dogs were used. This did not calm the situation. Everything they did just made things worse. <coughs> and here's where many people disagree with me. It wasn't bad policing. It wasn't mistakes made by government. This, I believe, was deliberate. The whole thing was deliberate. This particular incident, this atrocity, was treated differently, was handled differently. In the expectation and in the hope of those in power that exactly what happened would happen. They wanted it to boil over, they wanted people to riot. They wanted the excuse to do exactly what they've done now, which is crack down harder on these people than they have ever, ever done to anyone else before. To the point that they're talking about extraditing people from other countries merely for showing support for the protesters online. Ludicrous as that is, and it won't happen, the fact that they're actually discussing stuff like this, the fact that they're jailing people for memes that they posted on Facebook, The fact that they're arresting and charging 12-year-olds. The fact that they're arresting people for being in the vicinity, yet not taking part. Should tell you that this was already waiting to happen. They knew what the response would be. 
because they were just waiting for the incident. The regime we live under has engineered a society where an atrocity like this was going to happen. They were merely waiting for this one and the response to bring in the measures they're now bringing in. <coughs> the beginnings of a police state. And I've mentioned before that our new Prime Minister, Starmer, is a barrister, he's a, a legal expert, and is comfortable with legalities, and will do everything in his power to move away from political and parliamentary rules and regulations into the legal system. And with this first month, we can see that already, legislation that has never been used before being used, more legislation being enacted, um, a standing army of specialist police officers ready to deal with angry British people. And never once, never once, have they asked why are these people angry? Why? And herein lies a problem. The problem is, in a situation like we've just had, if it was uh, an Asian community that were protesting, or a black community that was protesting, the police and the government would speak to community leaders, advocate groups from the Asian community, advocate groups from the black community, groups of people that speak for the whole. Who are able to calm the situation down, speak to the people and the authorities, an intermediary. And sadly, as much as we shouldn't need one, the white British population has no such community leaders, has no such advocate group. And if anything has been learned from these recent troubles, it's that we need one. We need a white British advocate group who will discuss as an intermediary our rights and our requests between ourselves and the authorities. All other groups, all other minority, and I say minority in quote marks because <coughs> in a lot of areas they are the majority. All these groups have non-governmental organisations and advocate groups and associations that strive to improve conditions for their members and their community. And we haven't. And we need one. And it's an odd situation, isn't it? It's an odd situation that merely asking for the same level of representation as all other groups of people can and probably will be seen as racist or far right, whatever that 
never defined term means. And it's not. It's British. It's fair play. For far too long, the British people have felt that things are unfair. And unfair towards us. That people are treated differently. No, people are treated better than we are. And we've worn it because we're a tolerant people. But above tolerance is our desire to see fair play. And this is not fair treatment. So as odd as it seems, we do need an advocate, an advocate group for the white British. And I would say it needs to be a non-political organisation that can involve itself in all matters of social existence, of social life. And put forward to the authorities what it is we're asking for that can liaise with the press, the mainstream media, and explain the situation. Because, again, as odd as it seems, they don't seem to understand. And they refuse to debate, they refuse to talk to anyone who dares to criticise the way in which things are being run. <clears throat> I'm not the only person that recognises this. I'm not the only person that's been calling for this. We need an organisation to step up and say, we are going to be an advocate group for the white British. We are going to contact the government, we're going to contact the press, they will have all of our details and we are now going to start talking to different groups around the country, we're going to be that intermediary. And it's a, it's a big ask of someone but it needs to be put together because there's no one doing that job. And now the disturbances are over and now we're just seeing the beginnings of the crackdown of the facial recognition software being utilised, rolled out, where people who are identified will no longer be able to move around their own town without being clocked by 5G CCTV, where they will not be able to board a train unless they're given permission. <coughs> I said at the end of uh, last year that 2024 will be the year where players are put in position globally and definitely here in the UK where I live. The board's been swept clear. A lot of the old players have uh, well and truly resigned never to step into this affray again. And who knows, maybe they, uh, maybe they know it's a, a fruitless endeavour. But the players for the next few years are in place. And they're in place everywhere except America. And from what I'm seeing, that 
could go either way. But what I'm seeing in Britain, what I'm seeing in the UK, is a government that is going to use force and legality to crack down on dissent. You need to understand that, that what's being said is, you will not question us, you will not dissent, and if you poke your head above that parapet, we will arrest you, we will deprive you of your liberty, we will fine you, you will lose your job. Things are not looking good. So, my call is for someone out there to step up. Step up and become that advocate group. To put it together. To advocate for the people that have no one to talk for them. I'll leave this little video here. I look forward to speaking to, to you next week. I've got some uh, exciting news as well, some good news. And as much as the previous week has been um, a roller coaster for many people, it should have opened your eyes to the fact that the government we have is not going to capitulate. They've made it quite clear where their line in the sand is and who the enemy are. And sadly, the enemy is us. How we deal with that That's a story for another day. I'll speak to you soon, you lot. Take it easy.